Well, what a game it was for Malachi Jones, Tommy Grady, and the Albany Empire. What a damn great game it was for about three and a half quarters until the Empire decided to pull away against the Columbus Lions in the NAL Championship game. And thus, the Empire have won the NAL Championship in their first year. Kind of expected this, to be completely honest. Kind of expected this, you know, Grady coming back. Didn't expect the Empire to dominate the league like this, though. Aside from that one fluky loss against the Sharks, did not expect them to just come in, tear up shop, and win a championship like that. Um, I mean, wow. I mean, they made the ads they needed. They got guys like Darius Prince, you know, and, you know, I mean, they, just, they just did what they needed to do. They ran rough shot over the competition, beat them good, beat them handily. For the most part, and won the NAL championship first year, and now that's two titles in two different leagues in three years for the Empire. And you know the crowd wasn't the greatest. It was a, it was all right. It wasn't bad. It wasn't good either. But it was right there in the middle. Um, it's obviously because of COVID. That's the first thing. You know, you know I tried to I tried to I tried to divert and say you know something else. You Something else is happening, but I'll talk about that in another video. Um, so, you know, I tried to say there was something else, but everybody decided to just go completely ham on me in the in the um, live chat of the game. So, you know, I, I was right. I was kind of right. At the same time, kind of wrong. But it doesn't matter. That, that's whatever I was saying was out the window now. So, yeah. Yeah, hell. Finished up their season. Right on time, too, because... Yeah, it's about time to start speculating again. Is the NAL going to die, or is it going to, or is it going to stay afloat? Because boy, oh boy, oh boy, you know they they the NAL recovered a lot from earlier this year, and really, really, my summary of what the NAL has done this year really has been. They did the best thing. They did. They did one of the best things this year, and that was take care of Louisville. You know, get them out before they decide to cause a ruckus. And look at what happened to Louisville afterward. And we'll talk about Louisville more in a moment. But you know, the AL stuck with six teams once again because the Ontario situation shouldn't have happened in the first place. You know, that team essentially folded you know they're probably going somewhere I don't know where they're going to go it's not going to be in the NAL I don't think I don't think the NAL should be more than an east eastern coast based league you know keep it in that east coast so yeah cannot have more than six teams again this um, next season in 2022 if they make it that's the first thing now, obviously I believe they will make it um, I mean, they've made it this far, and they've had like three straight years now where people were like, "This league is going to die. This league is going to die." But I think it's resilient, you know, enough right now, especially with the Sharks, you know, still being the heavy hitter, you know. And now Albany has come in and done their thing. You know, I think think they'll have at least seven to start with West Virginia presumably coming back. There's supposed to be an announcement in December about that, presumably. The Rough Riders will come back. Greg Frenario probably will be owning the team again. You know, because I don't think he's going to find anybody you know, to take on, you know, those Rough Riders out there in Wheeling. So, they're going to have to add an eighth team, though. The NAL is going to have to add an eighth team and a stable eighth team. You know, people have been speculating, oh, College Park, Georgia, or something like that. Uh, Pittsburgh, publicly by Chris Siegfried himself and other different places so the NAL has a lot of options but they can't they cannot they cannot do what they did this past year and a half they cannot do what they did this past year and a half in regards to expansion they cannot do that again you know Jersey's kind of iffy right now to be completely honest because of the use of main of the main mammoths turf like that kind of a iffy type product and especially they didn't really have any fans 
at the arenas anyway. Um, even even I don't think even with COVID, you know, I don't think Jersey would have drawn that much. In all honesty, nobody wants to come out to, to Jersey like that. But the Empire is fine. Jacksonville's obviously fine. Orlando is fine. Carolina's fine, and of course Columbus is fine. I mean, Columbus is one of the founding bases of the league. The only one I'm really concerned about is Jersey right now, maybe West Virginia. But other than that, you know, five to seven teams at this current moment in time, I think is going to be fine for the NAL. The NAL will be fine. They'll just need to add another team, maybe two, maybe three. Try to get things in order. Try to get things stable. Um, speaking of stability, you know, I had never expected, you know, something as unstable as the Louisville Extreme having to come back and factor into things. We're now into the final week of the IFL season, and Louisville's games that were canceled, those 11 games now that will be canceled, and could now count. They could now count as part of adjusted, you know, um, adjusted like for seating purposes and things like that. The Louisville situation was bad enough as it is by terminating the team five weeks into the season when they had no money. You know, they shouldn't have even accepted them from the start. But now, now you've put the IFL in a precarious situation where it's just absolutely puzzling puzzling type deal here because there are teams that were supposed to play Louisville at least two or three times and didn't get to and you've had a whole schedule adjustments especially for Bismarck Bismarck lost the game they have 15 Sioux Falls Frisco have 13 some teams have 12 some teams have 14 and it's just a whole mess it's a mess that's what it is there should have been an adjustment to where everybody should have 12 games. You know, somebody, somebody was uh, talking about that, you know, on a Facebook group. Um, to where, you know, those 12 games would count. You know, everybody would have an equal amount of games. We wouldn't have to really do too much, the IFL. But we're, 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 we're way past that now. We're way past that. We are way past that stopping point. Now... If Louisville's games get counted as forfeits, as W's for forfeits, that might change some things. That might change a lot of things for teams like Bismarck, Sioux Falls, Breed Bay. You know, might change some things for them. But really, there's only a couple spots or so left in the IFL playoffs. I believe it's like three or four, maybe five, if I'm not mistaken. But Iowa clinched last night. Um, Spokane has probably clinched, but I don't think they're guaranteed a playoff home game yet. We do know it's eight teams. Remember, we had that whole kerfuffle throughout the entire year with it being eight teams. And we do know two things that we do know that two games of the first round and a semifinal, you know, will be, you know, it'll be somewhere. First thing about that first semifinal, or rather that first first round, quarterfinal, whatever you want to call it game, one of those games will be on a Sunday. It will be the Arizona Rattlers game on a Sunday. The other is a Saturday game for Stadium, and Stadium will air a semifinal. They will air a semifinal game as well. Found that out last night during the Green Bay Frisco game. So that is going to be fun. You know, I don't know about the IFL, you know, the United Bowl this year. I don't know if it's going to be on stadium because now you're kind of pushing it into college football season, which you really shouldn't have done in the first place. You should have backed this up maybe to August 21st. In all honesty, I think the IFL completely fumbled the bag here because there is no way. There is no way. See, you see already that there is a game that's getting adjusted to Sunday on the 29th and college football returns on August the 28th. So... My attention is running low on indoor football at this time. So, there's really only a couple things left here to be completely honest as far as playoffs go. Three to five teams have clinched their spots, but the other three to five spots, or however many are left, you know, are up in the air. Bismarck still kind of up in the air. They have one game left. Duke City needs to win next week to really secure themselves. Tucson. 
save their season by beating Duke City in a great game. Tucson has been delivering us on all fronts this year with great games. What a what a what a turnaround for that team. They were what one and six or something like that, and they've really turned it around the last few weeks. And you know, Green Bay, they're just kind of struggling right now. They had to get Damon May back. I don't know why they brought him back. I was wondering why they brought him back, and he did not do too well last night against my Frisco fighters. Frisco, you know, in Arizona, will have a matchup, and it will determine who will be the host of potentially, you know, throughout the entire playoffs. You know, who will be the number one seed throughout the entire playoffs. Could the United Bowl be in Frisco? That would be crazy stuff, you know. That that'd be nice, you know. Another team in blue, you know, that I support, you know, will happily, happily take that money for posting the United Bowl. <laughs> and, you know, a certain owner as well. But that's not neither here that's not even that's not even the point right now. So there's that, you know. Um yeah, I believe that's pretty much it as far as the big games for the final week of the IFL season. You know, Green Bay Sioux Falls. Green Bay's really struggled completely, and especially last night. They 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 just have not had a good time. You know, Tucson, you know, get back up in there. I think if they can make it work, if Tucson can make it work, um, hey, Tucson's gonna get in. Second time in three years. Technically, they'll be in second straight season. You know, second straight actual season. By the way, that Tucson will get in. And that'd be that'd be a great turnaround for them. Duke City needs some help. Miss Martin he probably needs a little help too. Um, Spokane's done. You know, for the regular season. We'll see if they host the playoff game or not, and we'll see if Iowa gets to host the playoff game or not as well. So all sorts of different storylines. For the IFL heading into the final week, you tell me what you, what your biggest storyline. And you know, there's also rumblings of somebody in the IFL. Somebody's moving down to the CIF, and we'll talk about the CIF in just a moment. But who would that team be? Who would that team be? A lot of people are speculating it will be the NAS Wranglers. You know, a great source of information somehow. You know, football insiders have said that they think a IFL team will move down. A lot of people think it's Naz. It could potentially be somebody else completely. The Wranglers right now, as it stands, as I'm recording this video, are getting beaten up by the Massachusetts Pirates 30-9. I don't know what the score is now. It's probably pretty much over. But, you know, I doubt that the Wranglers will move down. It it would serve zero purpose. And it's for them to move down. It would serve zero purpose for them to move down the CIF. I don't think it's really good, a good idea. And it, but it, you know, having the Wranglers there is great for Arizona. That's really the only reason why they're here. It's really one of the only reasons why they're here is that they're great for Arizona to keep it, you know, a little bit more manageable for them. Because you know, they've got Duke City, you know, they've got Tucson and We've been trying to put that as a rivalry, but I mean, Arizona's dominated Tucson every time. You know, and they got other teams out and about, you know, along the southwest, you know, for Arizona to make it a lot easier on them because they're the big they're one of the big money makers in this league. They're one of the big ones. You know. Jermaine's obviously own a lot of stuff now, but Arizona's still gonna be a big money maker regardless. You know, people in Arizona love the Rattlers. But yeah. That's my spiel on the IFL for now. We'll see what they do. They have a week. They still need to put out a press release or something about these playoffs, though. Um, CIF. Holy Toledo. What in the world, man? Y'all have basically, essentially, basically and essentially won League of the Year in my eyes. League of the Year. We already got... You know, we already got MVPs and guys like Tommy Grady and, and Malachi Jones, you know. But across the three leagues in general, the CIF, despite the fact that they've had problems as well, pretty much have won this year. They're winning the offseason so far, you know, and they're, and they're becoming stabler. They're becoming stabler. Remember, Wyoming, while not a very good team, 
was drawing fans. They were drawing fans consistently and at a high, high amount. They were filling out that little arena out there at Gillette. So who did the CIF add? Well, if unless I didn't say them last week, they added Topeka, Kansas. That is the fourth team in Kansas. It will get a name soon. But there's another team they added this week, and it was the Denver team. We don't know what their name is going to be. It is a team in Colorado. It is a team, but it's not no Colorado Stampede. So what in the world happened to the Stampede? What in the world was going on with that team? Is that team even real now? I don't know. I don't know if the Colorado Stampede is real or not. Could just be a figment of my imagination. Or somebody else's imagination. Who knows? But yeah, CIF definitely getting more stable. They're expanding into areas where they should where the IFL should have been expanding, you know. See a place like Gillette, Wyoming ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> there is nothing to do there. So, you know, and they mar they somehow they marketed very well. They they, get, they obviously marketed very well. Gillette did to where, you know, that state that arena was getting filled up every week. They marketed well. That that's that's just facts. You know, despite all the audio issues CIF has, visual issues with terrible graphics, and Wichita playing at a casino, and Oklahoma's work comp issues, and Amarillo and, and West Texas playing an independent schedule against trash teams like, you know, you know, just truly bottom of the barrel teams like the San Antonio Valor that don't exist anymore. You know, <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you know, all sorts of problems. But yet here we are. CIF is at 12 teams, potentially could add more, and it, it's it's just been a good time for them. It's been a good time. Remember, they named the new commissioner. Ricky Burtz is still heavily involved, though, but they named the new commissioner. They got things, you know, done. They got things done when indoor football is supposed to be done, you know, around late June, almost early July. They got it done. IFL's still playing. Should not be playing right now. Should not, there is no way I'm gonna be watching indoor football in September. It just doesn't. It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. It's not feasible. Well, NAL was lucky to end their season this weekend, but had they, you know, had something else that happened, you know, I'd imagine the NAL would have to like do something to make their season go even longer as well. You know, but they made it. But the NAL made it work. That's why they're the clear. You know, they're, they're clear number two right now. Clear number two in my eyes. You know, as far as managing things go, obviously, you know, I feel still technically the leader, but they fumbled the bag so badly this year. They fumbled the bag completely. We're talking the IFL page probably still has Louisville on there. The IFL's you know actual physical website probably still has Louisville on there. I've seen an ad. You know, for the IFL that still has Louisville in those videos, get them out of there. You know, if you want, to, if you don't, if you don't want that stain on your league. It was, it was terrible. It was a terrible stain on your league, and I still can't believe they're trying to use it now. They're trying to use Louisville's, you know, effective termination now as a means to try and get some teams to the playoffs because Sioux Falls hasn't been doing very well this year, and that could potentially lead to them getting in. Bismarck lost the game completely. Remember, they were supposed to play Sioux Falls another time. But they didn't get to play them. Still play 15, are still going to play 15 games. It's just not going to be, you know, 16. You know, 16 that we're supposed to have. So, uh -oh. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it in all honesty. And I guess the AWFC deserves a little mention. They're getting ready for their playoffs as well. And I believe they will end their season soon. Uh, I think it'll be like August 28th or something like that. Um, I'll have to, you know, see what I can do because there's some, you know, again, there's other people that have covered the AWFC way better than anybody else has done in, in these indoor football circles this year. So, you know, and also the AAL. Um, one more thing about them that I just found out today. AL's pretty much, you know, I don't know how many teams are left because San Antonio has confirmed that they are gone. The Chicago Powers confirmed that they are gone. The Indianapolis Enforcers 
or something like that. I believe. Hold on, let me check real quick. Let me check. Give me a second. Yeah, they're in the um, the NIF, whatever that is, National Indoor Football, probably. I don't even know if that's a thing. And of course, there was also something about the um, American Indoor Football. I believe it was something about like Winston Salem, North Carolina, or something like that. That's neither here nor there. It doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna really pretty much talk about the AIF. You know, in all honesty, you know, we keep it we keep it real simple over here with the main three and the little two. You know, so the AAL are looking kind of thin right now. They're looking kind of thin, and the AWFC is kicking along with whatever they're doing. But you know, CIF is going in with a lot of momentum. In all honesty, IFLs gotta get some momentum back they gotta get some momentum back they're supposed to be releasing their schedule in September the IFL is and hopefully we go back to 14 games hopefully we start early you know I, I don't know about you know the whole USFL XFL type deal I think we should you know scooch that back start a little early you know you, you know when they started a couple of years back they started in like February a couple of years back yeah let's go back to that please let's go back to that please I would love some early February indoor football that'd be nice but yeah that's gonna pretty much do it everybody y'all take care have a good week and we got videos coming coming throughout the week baby coming throughout the week so you know have a have a great week we're, we're, we're gonna keep on rolling here I'll see you soon